Association, and he has a background in government policy development and strategic relationships. And I found out yesterday in a meeting that he's also very, very funny. And uh, that's great. He, you are. You're, you're very, very funny. So um, that, always, that always helps, I think, especially in government policy development and strategic relations work. Um, he serves on the World Board of the International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movements, or IFOM, and is a regular writer and speaker on regulatory trade and market issues. He lives with his family south of Ottawa. So thank you, Matthew. Good morning, and thank you. Um, you're going to see the right side of my face a lot to, this morning, uh, which is my best side, um, because I have to look at the screen to tell you what I'm talking about. Uh, I just want to um, thank the organizers for the, uh, for the honor of um, getting that little surprise a couple days ago. And uh, do, do we need this mic, organizers? Is that like a recording? Yeah, OK, then I'll just move it over here. Just back in the middle there. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, anyways, I, I love coming to Organic Connections. It's a great, great conference, and, uh, and it's always just a real recharge to come and, and uh, connect with uh, a lot of prairie producers and uh, people all up the, the supply chain. So it's just, um, it's always a great experience for me. So I, uh, I love this opportunity to come and speak to you this morning. And I hope that I can pull it together. Um, so far, not off to a great start. But um, the organizers here do a tremendous job. And uh, thanks. The organizers here do a tremendous job. And, and I'm always really impressed. I go to conferences all over the world. And, and this is just an excellent one. They put so much time and effort into organizing it and uh, putting together this jam-packed program. And uh, so it's just a pleasure to be here. So uh, kudos to them. Um, they also, for some reason, thought that I was a guy who could fill an hour for you, so uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how that goes. But um, I, I can say that on occasion I've been accused of being provocative and controversial, so I'll, I'll do my best today. Um, this is, uh, I like to open with this. This is one of the things that Coda's been doing, and I'm going to just tell you a bit about who I am and, and who Coda is to start with. Um, we, uh, our, our mission is to promote and protect uh, organic to benefit the economy, to benefit producers and consumers, of course. And so one of the main things that we're trying to do is collect as much information as we can and put it in a way that it's really impactful, that, it, that when we go and meet with government or we meet with conventional producers or we meet with you know, policymakers, industry members, we can say, look at this story that we have for you. And in this graphic that we've developed really helps do that, I think. It's, it shows that our market in six years has tripled in size. And we're now, it's 3.5 billion, but we're saying now that as of 2014, we think the organic sales in Canada are now at about $4 billion a year which makes us the fourth largest organic market in the world. And that is, uh, we're punching way above our weight here. And there's a lot of people that take Canada very seriously on the international uh, forum when we talk about organics uh, for that reason. Obviously, I think, as we all know, we don't have enough supply and we don't have enough producers. And that's, I hope, one of the big messages we get out after Organic Connections is we go out and we help share that, that message and some of the materials that Laura brought up to you this morning uh, are really essential in, in trying to deliver that message. We need more farmers in and there's many reasons for them to look and consider organic. Um, some of the things that you want to see here uh, is, of course, the prairies. It's, it's, it's really the heartland. Uh, it's, it's a big part of organic in Canada. We have uh, the biggest concentration of producers here. We have the largest producers here. And um, just in terms of output, uh, just a major, major uh, supply base for both our domestic sector and market, but also for our critical export markets. And I'm going to talk a bit about those um, later on. Uh, consumers are also something we want to understand and we want to get to know. We want to know who's buying organic, why are they buying organic, what are the things that are important to them, uh, how do we fold that back into our standards, into our messaging, into our convictions, into our practices, so that we're constantly, as we did at the very beginning when we established organic standards, 
we're actually one of the few agricultural sectors that reaches out to the consumer and says, what do you want to see? And how do you want things done? And what's important to you? And how can we work together to do that? And we still have consumer reps on the standards committee that helps establish the organic standards. And so I think that's a really important relationship and we should never forget about that. So some of the interesting stuff we saw is that 20 million Canadians, that's over 58% of the, the population, buys an organic product every week. Whether it's a coffee or a whole, a whole breadth of, uh, of products in their grocery cart. Uh, we see that if you go to Vancouver, that number goes up to 78%. Uh, we know that Ontario is the largest market for organics. One billion, at least one, uh, approximately a third of the domestic sales are in Ontario. So that's your biggest go-to market in terms of volume. BC though, British Columbia, the best market in terms of the amount of consumers who are buying organic regularly. So that's your, your, your best saturation. Smaller population, but they buy a lot more organics than the typical Canadian does. And then if we look at growth, Alberta is actually the fastest growing province. So here on the prairies, on, in Western Canada, you've got you know, a couple of really good things. You've got really good consumers over in BC, pretty close to home. You've got a great supply base. And then you've got probably the fastest growing organic market in Canada here in, uh, well not here, but you know, here regionally in Alberta. So um, those are some of the things that we try, to, we try to do. And one of the things that CODA is really about is connecting the dots. So we're a membership based organization from producers all the way up to exporters, handlers, uh, manufacturers, retailers, certifiers, inspectors. The whole value chain comes in under our membership and uh, I want to speak with every one of you later today about membership and about some of those benefits. But we're we're really, um, we're really here to just try and connect the dots, connect the supply chain, and help people, uh, help the organic sector put that forward voice, put that positive message out, and, uh, and tell our story so that we can create that environment for continued growth. So I, uh, I'm one of those guys who uh, doesn't really farm. Uh, but likes to come to a farmer conference and try to use a farming metaphor. <laughs> and act as though I know what I'm talking about. So um, today's talk I, I titled uh, Plow Downs for Canada's Organic Sector because we're at this stage right now. I think everybody knows the market is humming. The US is hungry. Europe, you know, Europe's playing kind of like a little bit of a tease with us sometimes about what they want and what they don't want. But the, generally the message is everybody wants more organic product and you know, people will buy anything you've got at this point. And sometimes you have to do that kind of counterintuitive thing where you don't actually sell everything you've got or you plow some of it under. And so I wanted to say we're, we're kind of at this crossroads stage right now and we have to talk about plow down. So let me, let me just walk through a couple of these, these this, this sort of metaphor I'm playing with. When we talk about a crossroads, you know, it's a, it's a fork in the road. It's, it's, it can be uncertainty, it can be a decision, uh, it can be a difference of opinions, uh, it, it's change. Um, but fundamentally, and especially for agriculture, it's also the basis of trade, the crossroads. It's, it's where trade happens, it's where we see uh, the origins of trade. Um, it can be an opportunity, uh, it can be really about self-determination or deciding what you are going to do, uh, and often it is about change. It's about a, a change in direction, a new place that you're going to. When we look at plow downs, uh, they're a very different thing. It can actually represent failure. If you didn't figure your cost of production well, and it's going to actually cost you more to harvest that than you're going to get, people will plow it down. And, and it can represent failure to some producers to do a plow down. But we all know that it's also fundamental to long-term sustainability, and especially for organic production, it is an essential practice in terms of our crop rotations and in terms of how we put nutrients back into our soil, back into our system, and back into organic. And so I think it's a really rich metaphor in that way. It's, it's so, it's so forward-looking, and I think in many respects that's what organic is. Um, it's also about investment, and it's about sacrifice. And, and sometimes that's a little bit different than what we're seeing from the crossroads thing and, and from trade. And so we have to look at how are we investing in the future of our sector now, especially now when the market is so strong and when there's a lot of growth potential. 
Uh, this is the time when we actually have to invest and have to encourage new entrants, and we have to continue to encourage new entrants, even when the market starts to go down and we're worried about competition, because we know that with conversion, it's going to take them three years to come in. And we had this discussion the last time the market took a hit. And if we had brought in, in a really strong, coordinated way, new entrants at that time, we would be great right now. We would be growing even faster right now. But because we lost a lot of people, especially in the prairies, and because we were all a bit nervous about the market turn down, we didn't tell our story enough. And I think what we have to do is, especially at those junctures, at those crossroads, we have to continue to plow down and invest in organic and in the future. So the big thing here is change. We've got, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the changes that are coming. A lot of my talk is, is really about what's happening nationally uh, in the systems of organic. And so I can tell you the organic standards are changing, and I think Ted Zettel's here later and can talk to you a bit about that process of changing the organic standards. So next year in 2015, uh, if all goes as planned, we'll have a brand new organic standards, and there's some pretty significant changes being made to them. We have the organic regulations are changing. So the, the law that we all fought so hard to get in 2009 is actually getting folded into a new omnibus law for, other, for all food in Canada. And so we won't have an organic regulation anymore. We'll have a section of a bigger uh, re regulation. And so what does that mean for us? And what's that going to do as we come into a, a bigger house with all the other sectors and all the other food commodities? And how do we uh, remain strong and how do we have that law backing us? So the organic standards are changing, the regulations are changing. I think all of you know seed law is changing and I'm going to talk a bit about seeds. And as I've already mentioned, the, the market is incredibly uh, dynamic and, and vibrant right now. So all of those things are in flux and we have to, we have to try and uh, keep our eye on all of those. So my kids, uh, I have two daughters, uh, eight and five, and they love Dr. Zeus, of course, for the rhyme, uh, and for the, the drawings and the stories. Uh, the thing about Dr. Zeus, a lot of people don't realize, is he was actually really engaged politically. Some of his stories are about the Nazis. Some of his stories are about um, cutting down and clear-cutting forests. I mean, he was very, very... Uh, forward-looking and he really thought a lot about issues and, and he incorporated them into these stories that seem kind of fun and simple and, and rhymy but they're actually pretty acute uh, political observations. I really like this one. This is from the sleep book and I unfortunately can't read that far. I, maybe the gentleman's glasses would help. Um, but here I'm gonna try. So. Uh, at the, at the fork of a road in the Vale of Vavode, five, can you guys read that? I can't read that. It's a little faint. Maybe this other mic. Does this mic work? Yeah. Okay. At a fork of the road in the Vale of Vavode, five foot weary salesmen have laid down their load. All day they've raced round in the heat at top speeds, unsuccessfully trying to sell Zizzerzoof seeds, which nobody wants because nobody needs. And I, I really love that image of these seed salesmen at the crossroads who have been saying and trying all day long to sell seeds that nobody buys because nobody needs. And there's a lot of change coming to how seed is regulated in Canada and how it's dealt with. And, uh, and I think, for me, this is really telling. Because we, on the international stage, you know, we have this, this whole um, approach where, you know, we, we have contamination in our seed or in our products, whether it's a chemical contamination or it's a genetic contamination. And we, we bring it to our buyers and they say, we, we don't want that and we don't respect that as a, as a country and as a government. We don't sell what our buyer wants to buy. And I think fundamentally that's a problem and, it, and it's, it's a failure of logic and imagination to try and sell something that somebody doesn't want. Back here at home, I think it's also a challenge for us as individuals, as producers, as a sector, 
that there are certain seeds and certain visions for seed that have maybe a short-term vision or, you know, it's, it's kind of like a chemical input approach where you're going to see a real result really quickly, but long-term and fundamentally, it may not be the same thing. So there's a lot of intangibles here. A lot of people are sleeping at the crossroads around seed, and I think we have to think about that and articulate that and look at how, um, how much we need some of these seeds that are coming. And the, uh, something I like to do is I always say, what is the problem that this is a solution for? Because we get a lot of solutions thrown at us, but often nobody's actually identified what the problem is first. And so I think we, it's always good to sort of step back and say, well, well, what are we trying to fix with this solution? Because it may not, in fact, be the right solution. So one of the things CODA has done on the seed front is um, partnered up with the support of the Bauda Family Initiative on Canadian Seed Security, which is run by USC Canada. And I know Organic Alberta has also partnered uh, with them to, to provide a, a regional prairie-based uh, uh, you know, actions on the ground here through David, um, uh, through the same initiative. One of the things that we could bring to that was uh, some of our data collection and an understanding. So just last week, we released the first ever uh, study of the Canadian seed market uh, for organic and ecological seed in Canada. So this is available um, on our website. And quite tellingly, I haven't put the, the URL there, if anybody noticed that. So um, the website is ota-canada. .ca. And if you go there, or, or if you write me afterwards, you'll get my contact information at the end of this, and we can get you that study. It's free, it's comprehensive, it looks at field crops, it looks at horticulture crops, it looks at um, the purchases of saved seed, or sorry, the purchases of seed, it looks at saved seed, it looks at the value, and from... It, when you, we've done the market study, you saw the map earlier, we've done the consumer study, but for me, this is the internal economy of organic. It's, it's, the, it's the stuff that organic farmers buy that is really essential, and it's also itself a crop and a product that has value, and we need to better articulate and understand that. So one of the things that this study helped us do is understand what some of those values are, and we're able to say now that organic and ecological seeds, so by that I mean untreated seed, seed that is used by organic farmers or uncertified producers who are using organic methods, uh, is valued at $78 million a year. And you can see here a breakdown. The lighter shade of color is the organic purchases, and you can see there's some fine text around that, and the darker is the, the sort of magnifier impact of the ecological purchases. And what you really see there is that saved seed is really critical. Um, the, the purchased field crop seed on the right hand side is smaller than the actual, than, than the saved field crop seed on the left hand side. And this is really important for us to have this kind of data because last week we were in Ottawa and I'll tell you a bit about some of the, the meetings that were taking place in Ottawa, but we were able to go and meet with members of parliament and say, you know, you're talking about changes to the Seed Act right now and Bill C-18 and UPOV-91. And did you know that the fastest growing agricultural sector, organic, actually saves for field crops 